And as you all already know by now, I've been testing out the 2020 iPad Air for some time now, and it's been a pretty pleasant experience so far. Performance wise, it can definitely do pretty much anything that the iPad Pro can, but it doesn't have that sweet 120 hertz screen that I completely miss. With that said, there are a lot of pro apps on the App Store, and I was able to test out a few, but I wanted to give some honorable mentions to some that I have been using for some time already on my iPad Pro, but in this case, let's just see how they perform on the iPad Air, since I believe the iPad Air to be just as capable as the iPad Pro, but just on a nicer budget. So these are going to be the best pro apps for the iPad Air, let's begin. And before we continue, I just wanted to remind you that we have a Twitch channel where we stream every Friday and Saturday from 8 p.m. and to 10 p.m. Eastern time. So why not go ahead and drop a follow? And also don't forget to follow us on Twitter and Instagram. And also make sure to check out the merch store. There's plenty of black and white sweetness to choose from up there. So go ahead and check that out. And then make sure to take a look at the podcast as well as the podcast always goes live every Wednesday and Sunday. And with that said, enough rambling. Let us get straight into the video. And let's begin with one that I don't typically give much mind to, and I mean the category here, and this is going to be Forger. Forger is a 3D modeling app that is meant to resemble Autodesk Mudbox in a sense, and if you haven't used that app before, it is a sculpting app, but in the past, I've used it more so for texturing and things like that. Forger is definitely a much more watered down version of that software. It's pretty intuitive in that it has a lot of useful sculpting tools that you can use to work on your models and it even has some presets for you to use. Like for instance, I've actually been using this floating head preset that they have though I forgot what they call it, I think it was a bust. And yeah, like you can work on presets like that as well. It's very easy to operate, but sometimes I do struggle with the camera since it requires three fingers to rotate it around the subject. But after one point, it just didn't feel like doing so. So I was kind of stuck working from just one angle. Either way, I do see a lot of potential in this app. And most importantly, this one, features masks or layers to the uninitiated. There's just going to be a lot of potential for 3D artists here that do want to get some work done on the go. And I do think that this is going to be a pretty awesome solution for those people. Now, with that said, this app only costs $10 on the App Store. And Calipeg is an app that I actually really, really ended up liking. On desktop, I'm a fan of Sketchbook Pro's flipbook feature because of its animation prowess. Though with one of the simplest user interfaces I've come across, and Calipeg is exactly that, but with even more simplicity. It's not a free app though, but I've been working with a free trial and I really like how it handles working with different frames at a time and how simple it is to navigate. I didn't really dive too deeply into this app necessarily because I was very intrigued by the simpler things on it already and I was just having fun doodling with it and making really tiny shorts and things like that, but it is a very smooth and easy to use app that I had a lot of fun working with, as I just said. It's got its tools hidden away, sure, and giving you the entire screen for your work area, which a lot of people will appreciate, and I appreciate that too. It might not be ideal to many, and I understand that completely, but it definitely was fun working with it. I believe this one costs either $11 per month or $80 per year. I'm not entirely sure, but I'm also not sure about whether or not it's worth that price of entry for the tool set, but I suppose it's worth giving the, the free trial a go and then decide if it's really something that you would like to stick with for the long term. However, here's a more popular option that is going to be Clip Studio. I already have license to Clip Studio, so the cost wasn't really an issue for me. I found it to be a very nice and natural experience to draw using the software and of course I have no problems recommending it since it's got all of its tools ready for you and it's got a lot of them too and they're going to be right on your face. It even has an animation feature that I still haven't gotten used to but it is very in-depth if you're an animator and I think that you will really like that. However, I found this one to be the best app for making animation since it gives you more of a desktop-like layout than what you would get on the majority of mobile apps that are available on the App Store. So this is actually a pretty unique circumstance, which in this case, it is going to give you a lot more flexibility with what you can do here. 
On mobile, you do have to pay a monthly subscription. The pro version is around $2 per month and the EX version is $6 per month. Another fantastic drawing app and one that I've been using a lot is going to be Procreate. Probably the most popular option on this list actually. It's one that I have also featured in different videos before and even in my review of the iPad Air and iPad Pro. It's very smooth and has a large tool set, though I did find it to take some getting used to at first and quite frankly I am still kind of adjusting to the app since I don't use it every day all day. You will get a hang of it pretty quickly though and it does have an animation tool that I certainly took advantage of back when I was in school. I graduated as an animation major from college and this app was one that I relied on for working on my senior thesis on the go and it was definitely super helpful for doing just that because I mean the iPad Pro at the time was such a portable device. And this app works beautifully still on the iPad Air today. It is a great app that deserves all the praise that it gets, really. And this app is only $10 on the App Store, but that said. Next up is the app that I mostly use on desktop for my animations, but since it's lacking the flipbook feature on the mobile version, it's just a drawing app on the iPad. But it is a really good drawing app on the iPad. This is Sketchbook or Sketchbook Pro. This app has a lot of brushes and gives you a bunch of layers to work with. I found it very nice for working on stills and honestly even nicer than Procreate to an extent but that's really just because I'm so used to using Sketchbook for years on my desktop so I'm already very accustomed to the user interface. And to me it does feel like the most natural and intuitive of all of the apps with great potential and I can strongly recommend it if you're even and just starting to get into art but even if you're more so on the professional side I think that there's still a lot of value here for you as well at the very least to so give it a try. You may find a lot of great things here within this app. Even better, this app is absolutely free on the App Store. So hey, it's definitely worth the cost of entry, am I right? And Audible is going to be a bit of a change of pace here. And it's just about the only app I actually like for making pixel art. I designed my Twitch emotes using this app and I had a ton of fun doing so because the tools are just laid out for you. You can get very detailed if you wanted to and it offers a lot of flexibility. I can export these drawings in just about any format and use them pretty much anywhere. And that definitely makes this app pretty versatile, but most importantly, the layout is just very simple, very easy to digest and learn right off the bat. It's not meant for making animated pixel art or anything like that, but it does certainly get the job done for stills or for your sub badges of anything, and especially your emotes, just like I did. This app is free on the App Store, by the way, and strongly recommend it. And Pixelmator, in spite of the name, is actually a photo editing app, and it's more on the simpler side of things, but it is pretty easy to use. It does remind me a lot still of Affinity Photo, but it is simpler to adjust to since it's clearly meant to be an app with a simpler learning curve, and that's probably reflected on its price too. Honestly, I like it quite a bit, and I can see this being a very useful tool for many people. And while it is primarily a photo editor, there are drawing capabilities here too. Even though I probably wouldn't use it so much for drawing, I kind of prefer to use this as a photo editor overall. And there's even a more advanced version of this app too. So there's going to be the $5 version, which is the one that I'm testing here. And then there's going to be the $8 version. So yeah, go nuts. And I just mentioned Affinity Photo just a little bit earlier, but this app is very good. And it's one that I've mentioned before as well, but I wanted to bring more light to it since it really is that good. I'm not very good at using the software in general since my edits tend to be pretty simple. In fact, when I've used it, it's really been for designing my thumbnails, but I do make some pictures adjustments here and there whenever I have to clean up some skin on, on a selfie or something like that. I mean, fake it until you make it, am I right? But this is the app that I would get as a photo editor on the iPad Air. This app costs 20 bucks on the App Store and I would highly recommend it and I'm sure a lot more people would too. And another photo editor is Darkroom, but this one is much simpler than Affinity Photo and very different in a lot of ways and doesn't really take advantage of the Apple Pencil at all here. It operates more so over sliders, so it's not very precise and it's more general. These are changes that affect all aspects of any given photo that you're editing, which some might actually prefer if you're just trying to do general edits. Now, what's even better is that this app is entirely free and honestly, 
this app offers a lot of customization for its zero dollar price tag for sure and lastly i'm sure you all saw this one coming it's going to be luma fusion this is the best video editor on the app store for sure this is supposed to resemble final cut pro but it still looks a lot to me like davinci resolve which is the software that i use to edit videos on my pc this is a fantastic app that offers a lot of customizations so much so that you can download plugins for it online and add a lot more features like transitions LUTs and much more than that to it and in the grand scheme of things it does feel like a fully fledged video editor that works over a touch interface and my literal only complaint about this program is just that it doesn't have an a built-in stabilizer and I do hope that that gets implemented soon. But besides that, this is definitely the best video editor on the App Store and probably one of my favorites of all time. And not to mention that the iPad Air can handle editing 4K videos like it's nothing. Highly recommended, especially at its $30 price tag on the App Store. And that's pretty much it. Those have been the best pro apps for the iPad Air. So what are some of your top picks that I didn't mention in this video? Go ahead and let me know in the comment section below and let me know if you would like a follow up with different pro apps as well. I would love to make that video for you if you believe that it is worth it. So yeah, I'll be keeping an eye out for your comments. And if you're interested in purchasing the iPad Air after watching this video, I'm going to be leaving affiliate links down in the description. These are going to be affiliate links to Amazon. If you just want to buy it outright, you're going to get an affiliate link also to to lesser which is going to be a service that can actually help you find sales on any given product like this if you're looking for any especially now during the season this might be a great time to shop around for sales so that could be very helpful and then there's going to be another affiliate link that is going to be specifically for abundant which is going to be a financing service in case you would rather just pay for the ipad air bit by bit rather than right off the bat and it doesn't require a credit card in your end at all if you use any of these links i get a small commission helps out the channel a lot lot to be frank so i'll be leaving those down below and also make sure to stop by the text on my podcast as it does go live every week i also like to stream on twitch every friday and saturday so do stop by for that and also here is going to be the rest of my social media for my twitter and my instagram do make sure to follow me there as well if you would like but with that said this has been francisco from tech summit thank you so much for watching and i will be seeing you all later enjoy <laughs>